Good evening, welcome to Kabbalah and Chassidus Explained, Lecture 6. Tonight we'll be talking about Pesach, Passover, upcoming holiday, the practical and the mystical. Welcome also all that are watching us online via the links that I send via WhatsApp or you get from a friend or Facebook. Welcome all. Uh, it's very inspiring to see so many views. Um, let's hope it's going to be a great journey with this class and many more classes with Hashem's help in the future. The last class was Purim. And I said that we will, that the next class, the plan is to speak about the essence of God, the Atzmas Mahus. By the way, I said as much as a person can, but it's not going to be as much. We're going to, be, we're going to do part of it. We're going to do a good part of it. Um, but as I said in the earlier uh, introduction, that there are many things that I'm not going to teach. You kind of learn everything from a class online. So I owe you a small apology for not uh, doing that. And instead, doing Pesach. I felt that Pesach is very important, obviously to do a class on Pesach. So the plan is, Mr. Shem, that after Pesach, we will actually do a, probably a different class first, because once I got involved with all this, I, I, I watched a little bit of other Kabbalah classes and I found many quote-unquote non-kosher uh, Kabbalah teachers and uh, things that they said were uh, quite disturbing. Um, for instance, that Kabbalah has nothing to do with religion, has nothing to do with Judaism, which is obviously extremely ridiculous. Um, so I'm probably going to give a class, the next class after Pesach will probably be entitled something like, what is Kabbalah and should, uh, should, you, should I study it? And after that, Mr. Shah will go back to our program with the first actual class uh, on the Creator and eventually on the creation, um, which is really the great journey which we're going to go together. And I'm sure it will be very enlightening and inspiring of taking out this great, amazing information and secrets of the Torah that our, our Rebbes have taught us and, and uh, of, uh, of, of Rebbes of old, and including our Rebbe, uh, um, so it's going to be hopefully very, very inspiring and uplifting. Okay, uh, before we begin, just two quick announcements. Uh, we have Pesach's Dharam, as we had Baruch Hashem. This will be our 20th year that we have Pesach's Dharam, Publix Dharam, uh, both nights. Uh, please uh, let me know very soon, Thursday, Friday, the latest, um, better tomorrow, Thursday, was it April 11th, I think, yeah. Uh, if you're coming, also we're, we're inviting all those from the neighborhood, from the general neighborhood of uh, the greater Brighton Beach area. If you look further, go to a local Seder in your place. I also want to mention that it's 20 years, Baruch Hashem, of our work of Chabad of Kingsborough. So on May 12th, we will, Be'ezer Hashem, have a fundraiser uh, for our work in general, and especially for our camp, for scholarships for our camp. This will be May 12th in a few weeks, May 12th, 13, 14. Please stay tuned. Uh, it's going to be an online fundraiser, crowdfunding. Okay, so Pesach, Passover, the, the practical. It's quite challenging to give a, a class. You always try to keep this under a half hour um, on the practical of Pesach uh, to our crowd because many different people, we have hundreds of viewers, and there are people from all different spectrums of Observance. Some people are totally observant, some people are beginning to be observant. So it's very hard to give. Um, the Pesach is, you know, quite extensive and uh, strict. But I'm going to say several things which I hope will be helpful for everyone. Okay. So. <clears throat> really, the prohibition of eating chametz, chametz is any bread which is not matzah, kosher for Passover matzah. Basically, any grain which is made out of wheat, barley, spelt, rye, and oats. 
um, that are mixed with water and rise, uh, the, the dough rises, it's chametz. It's, it's extremely forbidden on Pesach. On the same level of eating Yom Kippur is eating bread on Pesach. It's the same level of prohibition, a very strict prohibition. Unless if it's Matzah Kosher or Passover. So really, the, uh, the prohibition of not eating chametz begins really at of Pesach. There's two levels of prohibition. On Pesach, it's, it's much more strict, but still, the biblical prohibition really begins before Pesach. And the rabbis tell us to stop eating Friday, April 19th, Erev Pesach, to stop eating chametz by 10.16 a.m. And we also have to destroy our chametz by 11.36 a.m. for the Brooklyn, New York area. So the right, real way how to do it is we, we clean our house from chametz and we, uh, especially the night before, we check for chametz, whatever we find, we burn the next morning. It has to be destroyed and burnt by 11.30s before 11.36 of the morning of Friday, April uh, 19th. However, someone that doesn't do this, someone, a Jew that's not totally observant, there's something amazing that you can do that will pretty much keep you away from sin the whole Pesach regarding chametz. Obviously, we have to be careful not to eat chametz and therefore all the ingredients, whatever we eat on Pesach is to be kosher for Passover. However, we're not allowed to even own chametz on Pesach. We have two sins if we own chametz on Pesach. Two sins every moment of Pesach. So for us to uh, to um, not to not to transgress this sin, there's a very simple solution that everybody does today, and that is to sell your chametz. We sell our chametz to a non-Jew for Pesach. We sell it the whole way. We sell it, and not, not, when we sell it, not, we don't tell the guy it's only for Pesach, and then we buy it back. We kind of make conditions. We sell it with a complete sale, but that's the rabbis know this. What you have to do is either you can even do it online with Chabad.org, you can do it with me, people from the community, um, or with your local rabbi, your, your local Orthodox rabbi. What's important to always remember is that if you're going to be in the beginning of Pesach, if you're going to be at a later time zone, for instance, if you sell the chametz with me, meaning that you fill out the form or you let me fill out the form for you, that you appoint me to sell the chametz for you, and then you're going to be in Israel. So there it's, or in France, Europe, there it's what, six or seven hours ahead. What happens is when we sell it, Friday morning by you, it's already after the time when you're allowed to, you cannot sell it anymore by you. So therefore you have to be careful, you cannot, it doesn't work. It only works if you are on Pesach, especially the first days of Pesach, in a New York time zone or even in a, in a earlier time zone, it's also fine. In California time zone, it's also fine. Okay. But it's something which is very, very much encouraged, even if you don't keep Pesach strictly and you don't keep all the laws so strictly. This is a very easy thing to do. It takes five minutes. doesn't have to cost anything. And you really uh, absolve yourself from many, many sins on, on Pesach. And it's, a, it's not, a, a, it's not a, a trick. It's not a game. It's, not, it's, it's a real sale by, by the laws of Torah and by the laws of the United States and the state of New York. It's a legal sale. That's very important for everyone to do. Okay. Then the mitzvah, we will discuss the mitzvah of matzah and the four cups. The main thing is the mitzvah of matzah. That's the, the major mitzvah of Pesach. It's called, in Torah, it's called Chag. Hamatzis.
the holiday of matzahs. So the mitzvah of matzah is to do it properly. So snacking is not enough. You're supposed to eat the matzah. But erev teichel matzahs, and it says the Torah, in the evening of, of Pesach, that, which is, besides Israel, the first two nights of Pesach, we have the two storm, the mitzvah is to eat matzah. So therefore we have to eat a certain amount in a certain amount of time. For instance, if I eat matzah, I eat uh, one matzah all day, a little bit, uh, 9 o'clock, a little bit, 10 o'clock, all night. Yeah, I'm not, It's not called eating, it's called snacking, it's called nibbling. Eating means, according to the law of Torah, is to eat a certain amount and a certain amount of time. So, it's, we're supposed to eat a kazayis in Achilles Pras, in a, in a time frame of Achilles Pras. What is that? So a kazayis, I encourage everyone to use the handmade matzah, the round handmade matzah. So that hand min matzah, a half of that matzah is a kazais. So that has to be eaten <coughs> um, within achilas pras, which is six minutes. You want to be more strict, it's four minutes is even better. In four to six minutes. In four to six minutes, uh, a half a matzah should be eaten. And the men, uh, this, this mitzvah is equal for men and women. All the mitzvahs of Pesach are equal for men and women. They're both obligated equally. However, the men, when they eat the matzah, they should lean on the left side. They should lean a little bit, let's say, like this. Or if you, you have a chair you, on your chair like this. You're leaning a little bit while you're eating the matzah. Because we're supposed to be free men, free people, we're royalty, etc. If someone has trouble eating matzah, it's hard for them to have the older person, whatever. There is an opinion that even a third of a matzah, of a round matzah, is also good. <clears throat> In six minutes, it's really not hard to do. The four cups, supposed to be a, a revise. A revise uh, is three and a half ounces. So the best thing is to have a small cup of five, let's say five ounces, a small cup, and to drink up the wine, the whole cup in one, you're supposed to drink it up all at once. Like that's called drinking a cup of wine. So there's a mitzvah of the sages to drink four cups of wine. So that's a revi, is three and a half ounces. Generally, there is a rule on Pesach, a very strict rule, and that is that if a piece of chametz falls in on Pesach to something, you cannot use the whole thing. It does not; it doesn't get nullified. And many other laws of kosher, if something non-kosher falls in, you always have to ask a rabbi, a competent rabbi, because many cases could be different. But generally, the rule, for instance. A general rule, again, you have to always ask a rabbi, but if a drop of milk falls into a chicken soup, in many cases it's kosher. The chicken soup, is everything is kosher. Why? In, in many cases, you always have to ask a, a rabbi, but in many cases it's kosher. Why? Because there's 60%, I'm sorry, 60 times of soup, usually if it's a, if it's a large pot of soup, a small amount of milk, so it's a, it's the, there's 60 times of Meat uh, uh, of meat and soup, etc., over the milk, so it's nullified. The taste is lost. It's not considered anything significant. It's kosher. In chametz and pesach, there's no such a thing. The smallest amount of chametz that gets mixed into a large amount of of, of kosher of Passover uh, products, you cannot use it. Therefore, we're so careful to clean our house on pesach, especially the kitchen, everything that we can, anything to do with food, we 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 we're very careful with cleaning. Now, really, the, the utensils have to be kosher for Passover. You really have to use different utensils. The best way is to use different utensils and there's ovens you could buy, cheap ovens, gas ovens, electric ovens, whatever. But um, if not, you have to kasha them. That's the real way how to do it. You have to kasha them. And we're not going to go into all this. 
but uh, I suggest that you could listen to a general class on this topic. On Chabad.org, Rabbi Schusterman gives a class on this, one or two classes. And you could take a look also at OU Kosher on the internet, OU Kosher Orthodox Union, OU. The Modern Kitchen, you just make a search the Modern Kitchen, and you'll see uh, it gives you quite detailed instructions of how to kosher different items. Uh, but if you want to buy a few new pots and a new burner or whatever, and let's say use just plastic, that's the easier way, and even more mohut, it's, it's, it's even a better way, because like this, you don't have to deal with koshering. You know, koshering sometimes is not done 100% properly. You don't have these problems, you don't have these issues. Okay. Also, many people rightfully cover their their countertops and, and sinks. There's different sinks you could buy, like Pesach sinks that you put in. You put in like a new sink, uh, like a tin sink, cost you $20, $30, whatever. And uh, people cover their their the counters with, with thick silver foil, maybe two layers, because like this, it doesn't come in contact with the countertop that you use the whole year round. Some people kasha the countertop. Uh, people really should kasha the counter countertop as well with hot water, boiling hot water, whatever. But we're not getting into all these details. Again, you could look into this, into, but we have to know the basic things. In other words, so if we get a, a we cover up all the chametz sticker things, and we get a uh, Pesach burner and some some pots, and we use plastic uh, forks and knives and, and spoons and, and plates, etc. And bowls, you're pretty much covered. <coughs> so getting new is always better. But if you want a kasher, there's it's, it's in Shulchan Aruch how to do it, and in today's modern uh, different uh, different utensils. This so you have the OU is quite in detail. I looked at it a few minutes, a minute or two, not long, but I believe that the, obviously you could rely on the OU. Um, you could try to check maybe star K also has something I didn't check. Okay, that is all for the practical. And now, oh, one more, one more thing. One more thing in the practical, excuse me. So one of the mitzvahs of the night of Pesach, we didn't talk about the maror. The maror, we didn't talk about the horseradish. You could use a uh, combination of horseradish and Roman lettuce for mutter and ah huh? okay listen we're not gonna go through everything here um, but you could uh, use a, a three quarters of an since mutter today when they don't have the Kabbalah Pesach, we don't have the P Paschal Sacrifice because we don't have the Temple. So Mara today is rabbinical. So you could be lenient on the, on the shear, on the amount of Mara for th uh, three quarters of an ounce. But the uh, Achilles Pras, so the Achilles Pras actually, the amount of time that you use for Mara could be could be could be longer. Could be nine minutes. Okay, if you couldn't six minutes, great. But uh, but if, but since it's rabbinical, so we're more lenient, and even nine minutes would also work. Three quarters of a I, uh, three quarters of an ounce in nine minutes. Mutter. All right. Excuse me a second. So the next thing we're going to discuss uh, shortly is, okay, by the way, others hold by the mother six or seven minutes, but if it's hard for you, you could do nine minutes, it's also fine. Uh, as we said, three quarters of an ounce. Uh, okay, another mitzvah of, of the, a, a biblical mitzvah, of the night of Pesach is to tell the story. Tell the story of Pesach. We got it to Levincha. The child usually asks for questions and we answer the whole thing. The whole Haggadah. If you cannot say the Haggadah, say the most important parts of the Haggadah. What's important point here is like this. Listen to this. Where is it? No. I just had it. 
Okay, so basically, until I find it, the Haggadah has to be said, should, if you don't understand any Hebrew, if you don't understand the Haggadah at all, you should say it in the language that you understand. Okay? Because it's not a prayer. It's telling the story of the Exodus. Telling the story, it's not just, you know, mumbling with your mouth, saying words you don't understand. It's you telling, retelling the story. So therefore, it has to be done in a language that you understand. Okay, here it is. Yeah, okay. <coughs> Now a little bit on that. The Maharal, the great Maharal, wrote that the main thing of telling the story of, 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 uh, of Passover is Machshav Salev. The thoughts of your heart, you have to experience it. You have to understand what you're saying. If not, he says, Lo have a midi, it's nothing. According to Maharal, if someone says that God, he doesn't understand the words he's saying, he knows the Exodus, but he doesn't understand the words he's saying, it's not, it's not counted. Obviously, you don't have to understand every single word. If you understand more or less, it should be fine, I believe. Um, another, another sefer, also the Rebbe Kudecha, that he says he believes, it seems to him, in his opinion, that a person says that God, and he doesn't understand at all what he's saying, he does not have, fulfill his obligation. Because, we sp because the, the point is to tell the stories, tell the miracles of the Exodus. If you don't understand, you're not telling it. It doesn't mean telling the story. You're just saying words in a different language which you do not understand. Therefore, someone that not, does not understand should also read the, the translation, etc. Not later when you're eating the, the meal, you're looking at translation. During the Haggadah. During the Haggadah, you should, you should read, especially the important parts, if you don't understand the Hebrew, you should read it in the English, Russian, whatever it is. <clears throat> and you read it, you're supposed to say it. You're supposed to verbalize it, not just read it with your eyes. You're supposed to say it. The same thing goes, with, by the way, with prayer, with benching, with blessings. You, uh, learning Torah, you have to s verbalize the words. You don't have to say it loud. It's better to, but you don't. You don't must even. But you have to verbalize the words. Okay. Now on the mystical. So we're going to do from Lakuta Teira, Sheish Yisrael Mutechal Matzas, the first mimer of Sheish Yisrael Mutechal. Two my modern, it seems like of Sheish Yisrael Mutechal Matzas. Yeah. No, not two, two parts. Anyway, so this is the Shesha Sabbath Hamatis and Kutta Teda. There might be a few modern Shesha Sabbath, if I remember correctly. But anyway, um, it's called Shesha Sabbath Helikalaf. Okay. Uh, we're learning Pedek Shlishi. We're not going to learn inside, just a little bit. We're going to start mostly from the third chapter in Shesha Sabbath Hamatis. Okay. So first, he explains that something at length which we're not going to go into. A basic, that's an interesting question. There definitely are four. Generally, there are four levels of creation in our world. We spoke about it once in the past, and uh, inanimate things, dead things, plants, animal kingdom, and human. The human being has to is dependent extremely for his food and the, all the other three levels. Why is it so? Altab asks. Bread. bread. What's bread? It comes from the ground. Wheat. It grows. It's two levels down. Right? Water. Three levels down. But yet, that's the only way a person can sustain himself. The answer for that is because 
those lower things really have a very high source in spirituality, in, in, in the divine energy, which we won't, it's called Tohu, the energy of Tohu, which we will not go into that. It's not in the scope of our class. So therefore, it's that divine energy that gives a person physical strength, even his mental strength, intellectual strength, even for him to be able to understand Torah, even for him to be able to be inspired uh, during prayer, revealing his love and fear of God, meaning becoming a more of a spiritual person. If he doesn't eat <laughs> before, it's going to be much harder. If he eats, um, if, right? It's even Shulchan Aruch. Shulchan Aruch, really not supposed to eat before you pray in the morning. But if it's hard for you to have concentration, you're allowed to eat something. You eat a little bit, a coffee, uh, something, a piece of cake even. It's fine. If you know that's going to help you with concentration in, in, in prayer, you're allowed to. So, turns out that a piece of cake helps you in connecting with God, it's amazing. <laughs> Why? Because it has, a, or the cup of coffee, because it has a higher source. It, it comes from a higher source in, in, in divine energy, and that divine energy is what gives you this boost. According to that, we'll understand the special quality of matzah. So he basically he quotes, and before he quotes, uh, uh, it says in the Talmud, the Talmud Brachis 40a, that ain't a tinnike deal, look at Abba Achitim Tam Dagan. Interesting thing that a baby starts talking, starts saying Abba, father or mother, Abba, Ima, when he starts eating grain, before he or she, before that he cannot speak. The Gemara connects the grain, especially when the Alter Rebbe explains it, that the, eating the grain helps him develop that ability to speak. What's the connection? As we spoke, explained before, it has a higher source. The grain is lower than him, but something that, that, something that is often, something that's lower has a higher source. That's the case over here. So that's what gives him this ability to begin to speak and develop this, this uh, ability. A human being in, 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 in ancient Hebrew is called a medaber, someone that talks, because animals cannot talk the way people do. So, so the same way this is true in the physical world that a child begins to speak his, his this mental development begins when he starts eating grain and it also when a person eats grain a person eats is satisfied that helps and gives him physical strength and spiritual strength as I explained before the same way is matzah but this was for the body but matzah gives strength to the soul It's a certain, uh, on Pesach, it's a spirit, matzah on Pesach, especially the mitzvah of matzah, but it even says a different place, I don't remember where, I think from the Tzemach Tzedek, that even matzah, the whole Pesach, has, it's probably not as much as the night of, the night of the Sedarim, I'm pretty sure with that, but it also has a special, so to speak, spiritual vitamin for the soul. Why? So he explains what is matzah. Matzah is when the dough does not rise at all. Once the dough begins to rise a drop, it's not matzah, it's chametz, it's forbidden. Not just forbidden, it's extremely forbidden. It's forbidden to own it and to benefit from it. Terrible, yeah? Very, very strong prohibition against chametz. What happened here? It starts to rise. Ra rising resembles arrogance, haughtiness. I'm better than you. I'm higher than you. I'm not just Hashem is important, I'm also important. Because I'm important. Not because I'm a child of God. Not because uh, God gave me a mission. But because I'm, I'm, a, I'm just a talented fellow. And I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know. That is something which, which is a separation between us and holiness and us and God. The way we, a Jew, connects with God through Torah mitzvahs has to be through humility. And we say every day in davening, in the end of Shemona Esau, the kind of said, uh, My soul will be like dust. Open my heart to your Torah. That's a prerequisite. Humility. Doesn't mean I'm, I'm letting everybody 
you know, harass me and bother me and, and bully me. No, that, that's, that doesn't mean that. But it means to be humble. Now, we're not going to talk much about that. It's, it's really a, it deserves a class on its own. Humility. But basically, if a person is truly conscious of Hashem, God's existence, and God's greatness, how could a person be arrogant? It's, it's like, it's stupid. Relative to God, me and the stone is the same thing. Me and the little uh, cockroach is the same thing. Relative to infinity, we're all nothing. So I'm arrogant. I'm, 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 it's, 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 um, it's foolish. But anyway, but, but we're not going to discuss it at length. So matzah has no, doesn't rise. It has that special quality of bitl, of nullification before Hashem. Battle at Seincha to help us nullify our will before God's will. And that is why the matzah is called in the Zohar, Michal de Memnusa, the food of faith. It gives us, helps us with faith. It's the pill, the spiritual pill that helps us with faith in God Almighty, with faith in the Torah, etc. Um, it helps us this mitzvah of matzah. And matzah through the whole Pesach, especially the mitzvah of, through the mitzvah of matzah. It's called in the Holy Zohar, Michal de Memnusa, the Zohar, the second part of Zohar. Uh, 41a and 183b. The Zohar calls the matzah the food of faith. By the way, it's also called the food of healing. Of healing. We're not going to talk about that now. But why the food of hate, uh, faith? Because faith is also nullification. I put my... my uh, even if I don't understand, I do it anyway. That's, that's humility before God. That's nullification before God. Now actually... We spoke about faith in the previous class, and I urge you to go there. It's in lecture three, faith and reason. We describe more about what faith is. It's approximately from um, from seventeen to twenty-three. Those minutes, seventeen to twenty-six minutes, six seven minutes. That I explain what faith is. I urge you to go there. I don't want to repeat it. So, but here the point is that faith is something that I, I fulfill God's will even if I don't understand. I don't always wait. Oh, first I have to understand everything perfectly. Then I'll do it. No. I'll do it anyway. That is humility before God. So, so the same way a child doesn't know how to call father. Why does the Gemara say father? It doesn't know how to say. You know, usually that's the first words a child says. Father, mother. So the same way a child does not know, listen to this, the same way a child does not know to, co uh, to call his father until he eats grain. So he's saying when a child calls father, two years old, three years old, he or she, whatever, one and a half, child doesn't understand how it's, my, how it's his father. How, how, what do you mean? Why is he my father? How does, uh, child doesn't understand any, anything of, of, uh, of explanation of it, of the logic behind it. Why do I have to love him? But nevertheless, you know, this is my tati, this is my father, my papa, papachka. You know, young, the young children, they love their parents you know, to no end. That connection with the child, the child has with the parent is extreme connection, very, very strong. Beyond reason. So on one hand, there's no logic there, but the connection, the bond is very, very strong with the child is very young, we know. And the nafshik shurum ma'id b'nafashaviv. His soul is very much bonded and connected with the soul of his parent, his or her parent. He says the reason for that is because it comes from that grain <laughs> that comes from a very high source, which is above reason, above logic. Logic is limited. Logic is limited. But here. The, the connection is so strong which is not necessarily connected to logic by the child it's below logic but the source where it comes from is above logic so this isn't the physical the same way it's in matzah and the spiritual so when a Jew eats matzah which is called the food of faith what happens it gives you the, this, uh, this, this knowledge and recognition 
and bonding and connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, with the Holy One blessed me with God Almighty. So should, the same way the grain, the physical grain, the regular grain helps the child call father, the same way this special mitzvah grain of Pesach helps us call as Abba Shabbat Shemaim, our Father in Heaven, with his kashas chazok at mitzvah and with a very strong connection. Although he doesn't understand necessarily logically everything, that's faith and that's nullification. I just want to mention that in that class which I mentioned before, which I again suggest to you to go back to lecture 3 from minute 17 to 23, we talk about the importance of bringing faith into reason, bringing faith, faith into, the intellect, into, into the intellect. But we also discuss what faith is, so I, I suggest that you go there. So remember, to do the mitzvahs of, 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 uh, of Pesach properly, the mitzvah of matzah, very, very special, very dear mitzvah, it's the food of our faith, it helps us for our faith, helps us, it's a food of healing, and there's another basic thing, very simple, that's really the simple level, that when we left Egypt, two and a half million people left Egypt, men, women, children, babies, we left in a desert. What do we have with us? How long are we going for? We had matzah. That was the food of faith. We, we went total faith, total reliance on God Almighty in a desert. In 1967, when the Arabs were losing the war, they couldn't survive more than a day or two in the desert without provisions. It's, it's a, so, so the, the, that's uh, it's also called food of faith, because because that's all we had. We went to total faith in Hashem. Okay, so I wish you all a happy kosher Pesach and all the best, um, and uh, may Hashem help. That benisin nigalu benisin benisin asin The Rebbe always would repeat this from the from the sages. And in this month of Nisan, we were redeemed from Egypt. And this month of Nisan, we will be redeemed through Mashiach Zidkenu. May it come speedily in our days. And this Pesach will be in Yishalayim with the Samikta shall come Pesach uh, with Mashiach, um, and uh, we'll know no, of no more pain, uh, of no more problems, and world peace, etc. And uh, peace in Israel. And uh, all our problems will not cease anymore. Our only problem will be to understand God deeper and better. That's going to be our only issue, our only challenge. Uh, higher and higher, deeper and deeper. Okay, once again, Koshabi Passover, everybody. Koshabi Pesach, Hakashav Sameach. Thank you very much for watching and all the best. See you, God willing, uh, online or here after Pesach. Uh, remember about the Pesach's Dharam we have. All the best.